Good morning. Hello. This is Medical Data Mining. My name is uh, Ronen Talbotzer, and we begin with the first uh, lecture, which is uh, a bit of uh, scientific background, some kind of introduction to this field. The topic of this uh, part, first of all, we will talk about the course itself. Then we will start talking about medical data. From there, we will move to data mining, and then we will combine the two to make medical data mining. We will discuss some algorithms, which is the basis of whatever we do in medical data mining, and uh, we will conclude with some business perspectives about this field. So let's uh, begin uh, with the first topic, which is uh, just about this course. And the first question we should ask is, of course, what is the goal? What is uh, the goal of medical data mining? And just before we answer that, what is medical data mining itself? And I try to um, visualize it in one slide, just one slide. If I needed to take one slide to visualize it, this is the slide I would take. <laughs> so do you know this uh, character, uh, Dr. House? What we try to do with medical data mining is to create some kind of computerized Dr. House. Now what do I mean? Forget about all the drama, the Hollywood pieces of that. This character is, first of all, very intelligent. He is smart. And he has a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of data maybe. And he is looking at patients, he is reviewing what he knows, and he tries to infer, and he tries to guess, and to bring hypotheses and so on. And we try to create in this course algorithms, computational algorithms, that uh, they don't get into the level of the human a human uh, doctor, of course, but uh, we try to help him. Many times people ask me, really Ronan, do you think AI, artificial intelligence, can ever replace the human doctor? And to that we say no. But doctors who will use AI will, rep will replace the doctors who will not use AI. So <laughs> that's, that's the notion. Okay, so this is a very, very nice goal, you know, maybe a bit fantasy. Let's try to make it more down to earth. And the goal, and this is not the first time uh, that I'm telling you that in the context of this program, is to make yourself system engineers. This is what we call it in the high tech space. The idea is not that you will not become software developers or not AI engineers. What is needed, because there are many other software engineers in the market, we don't need more. What we do need and what the market lacks is people who know the two disciplines. On one hand knows medicine and on the other hand knows computer science and in this case machine learning and AI. And these kind of population, people who knows the two disciplines and can make the proper hybrid in their mind are what we lack in order to solve many uh, big challenges in medicine but also this is what in high tech world is called system engineer so system engineer is someone that can see the system see the different perspective the medical perspective as well as the computational pers perspective we can also call it something like solution engineer and more than anything it's to make innovation to make new ideas, to find new solutions, and maybe sometimes detect new kind of problems. You know, when we began this course or this program, we thought that the main obstacle, as we saw it then, was that here in the ivy tower of academia, we make great algorithms and just we need to bring them down into the patient's bedside. That's true, but that's not the complete picture. What we learned from graduates of this course is that they who come from the field, who come from the patient's bedside, they think and they encounter problems that we have never thought about. So they bring it up 
let's say it's up to the ivy tower of academia to the scientific research field in order for uh, for us to find solution so this is what we aim uh, for you to do to innovate to detect new problems and find solution to these or to other problems okay now the way this course is built is it that it's intertwined between horizontal topics and <laughs> vertical topics let's begin with the vertical topics this is easier to understand just vertical topics just what each uh, lesson will be about so as we said first lesson is introduction and scientific background and then we will move uh, to a very important field in AI which is called machine learning and specifically unsupervised machine learning what is unsupervised I will explain but we will begin with unsupervised machine learning we, we can say it's the move from data to information to knowledge Dif different hierarchies of data or of, or of information Topic number three is supervised machine learning. This is where we feed the machine learning with examples from real life, from experts and whatnot. This is like the next uh, step in the ladder where when we make knowledge, wisdom, and then make decision out of that learning or, or out of that wisdom. In the fourth uh, lecture, we will talk about electronic medical records. So far, we were more focused in this program on genomic data. Now, we will open the scope to include things or data that is not only genomic. And this data, in many cases, let's call it phenotypic data, okay? Or the data that uh, we as patients collected also after, you know, that night, when our father and our mother uh, made us and our genome was determined. After that, we have gone through different occasions and different uh, circumstances that resulted in new kind of data. And we want to collect this data and we want to respond to this data. And in many cases, luckily enough in this century, it is getting more and more digitized and stored in electronic medical records. So this will be one of the big topics in this course. And then, from lesson number five, we move to the main part of the course, which is artificial intelligence in medicine. We will have three parts for that. Part A is about evolution and creativity. Part B is about the move from search, search algorithms to cognitive computing. And then part three is, uh, actually it's very interesting, it's how can we teach computers to read biology? I mean read text, read actual natural language text in biology. And we will end, the last lesson will be the move from data mining, all the things that we learned in this course, to personalized medicine, which is, after all, the overall goal of whatever we do here. And then we have like a very nice epilogue at the end. I call it Seeds of Future Revolution. Anyway, these are the vertical topics uh, that we will cover in this course. But as I said, they are intertwined with horizontal topics. And those horizontal topics will appear from now on in this sidebar that you see here. And this is, this is like some kind of a map. It's not linear. It's not going from uh, up to down. At each and every vertical topic, I will connect it to one of one or more than one of the horizontal topics. You will see what it means uh, as we go along, but it's very nice. So your uh, brain will be like uh, connected in two di different dimensions. It's, it's, it's a, a very nice way to learn. All right, there are uh, several units in this course. Uh, so first unit is of course the lectures. Uh, and the lectures uh, in the rest of the course, but also in the microcosmos of this lecture, the lectures about medical data mining are split between these three components. Medical data, data mining, and then medical data mining. Whenever we talk about just medical data, 
everything will be in green. Whenever we talk just about data mining, it will be in blue. Green like biology, blue like computers. When we talk about the combination of the two, which is the most important uh, stuff, the medical data mining, that will be in red, like it's now. But uh, something else that is connected to this course is not just the scientific stuff, not just the medical stuff, but also some of business stuff. Business and money is what makes everything possible from the first hand. So, and what's so nice about the business ecosystem here, not only does it support whatever we do with medical data mining, but it also changes very rapidly. So, uh, some of the things that I will teach in this course have not been published yet. So we will have like breaking news sessions, they will, be, they will appear in purple, about uh, some of the really recent news, like from the past days or weeks in this field. I think it will make everything more, you know, the, the context will be more enriched in that way. So these, the lecture, lectures is of course the first part. Uh, the first unit. The ne uh, second unit is assignments. We will have a few assignments, not too much. Um, and these assignments will deal with uh, how to model problems and how to create the architecture of the solution. Uh, and these are the two things, the two kind of skills that we usually need. We need to model problems and we need to architecture the solutions. Uh, and what we will give, and this is uh, something relatively new in uh, academia uh, and also in uh, online courses, is we will give you a personalized feedback on whatever you uh, submit, uh, not only by humans, uh, like teaching assistants, but also by artificial intelligence itself. So we will learn artificial intelligence, we will solve problem in artificial intelligence, and the grade that we will receive and the feedback will be done by artificial intelligence. Okay? A lot of artificial intelligence. So that's the second part, or second unit. Uh, and uh, the third unit, uh, very important as well, is practice lessons. Uh, and here we have an online course, uh, which is called Developing Artificial Intelligence for Medicine with Python. So we will see how to use Python. We will not learn the whole Python language. We will not even cover 50% of the cover of that language, even less than 20%. But that's enough to build solutions in artificial intelligence, and we will build solutions for medical purposes. And we will have also some kind of responsive assignments, things that you can even at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, hopefully you, you won't need that, uh, you can program something, submit it, and that AI agent called Sense will give you personalized feedback one second after you submitted your solution. That's something that you probably don't, you, you, you've never seen. And lastly, the last unit is something very nice. It is uh, done here in campus, on campus, uh, but also online. And this is uh, something like, like we say, uh, like a carnival or a fair. We call it the medical data mining fair. Uh, and here, this is like the final project of this course. You can do in pairs a project. It's not too much. I will explain what this project is all about and you can do it either if you take the practice lessons or if you don't. Um, and the project is basically about really modeling a problem and then doing the architecture for the solution. Uh, but more, more than anything, it's innovation and it's where your creativity meets the world. And what do I mean by world? First of all, uh, each pair will present the uh, project uh, to a panel of um, people from uh, the faculty and also from uh, our partners like Sheba, uh, the medical, the Israeli uh, Medical Association, and some uh, high-tech companies uh, that uh, we partner with. Uh, but also, if you choose to and you don't have to, you absolutely don't have to, 
you are also entitled to present that project in the internet, in this uh, online course. Okay? So, uh, but we will talk about that fair uh, toward the end, and then we, it's like in a democracy, uh, or like in a, how do you call it, X Factor and so on, you can vote, people will be able to vote with the smartphones. It will say it's, it's, it's very, very, uh, very nice. Okay, so these are the four units of this course. Uh, the staff. So I'm, uh, I'm the lecturer and here you can see my contact information. So you can contact me uh, by email or by Skype or through Twitter. Uh, we, we have three teaching assistants, uh, Ronnie Cheval, who is a medical doctor. I don't know if, uh, if you've already met him or if you've known about him. He is a graduate of this program and he took that uh, for PhD in medical data mining. Uh, so he will give a, a session, Nati Gathan and uh, Guy Chachmon, who you know. Uh, just a bit about my background, so I began uh, combining uh, uh, computers and some kind of life sciences, let's call it, in, the, in my military service. Uh, I served in the uh, Central Technology Unit of the Intelligence Corps. Uh, I, had, I worked in a lab, it's not that lab. Uh, <laughs> this is much nicer and this is not me here. Um, but what was so nice about this experience and relevant also for here, um, I, you know, came to a lab and I was given all the tools and, you know, beakers and microscopes and whatever. And because I was like a computer geek, I said, you know, many of those experiments that we do, I can also simulate on the computer. And initially, I, I was a laugh, really. Also at the end, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but people say, you know, we cannot do that. And then I just began doing it, and I made like very tiny simulations. But those simulations first saved some time and enabled us to progress in our research much, uh, much more uh, quickly. Uh, but also uh, made me understand what is the potential of this field when you, using computer simulation, um, can save time and can save effort or money in clinical trials or in other scenarios. So that was my military service. After that, I worked in several high-tech companies and uh, studied um, um, for bachelor's and then a PhD. And this is uh, the PhD uh, that I made in medical data mining. Um, it was uh, done here. Um, and here you can see a piece from Haaretz newspaper. It's, it's a funny piece. It says that the patient is uh, making jokes with his computers or something like that, right? Um, and they said something like, again, that I'm building a software that will replace the physician. This is really not the case, but definitely we are trying to empower the physician. And how, in this case, uh, by uh, doing some kind of hypothesis engine. What you see in this nice animation is a very common graph that you can see in so many <laughs> scenarios. Uh, I think here is a patient of uh, hepatitis B or something of the sort, of uh, hepatitis C, I think. Anyway, uh, the horizontal axis is time. Uh, and then uh, every time that the patient uh, come to the clinic uh, to give blood, we measure, in this case, uh, the viral load uh, in red and the ALT in uh, blue. And uh, these are the data points that you can see here in the dots. Um, and what really usually people do? Connect the dots, right? But we, as more intelligent humans, and maybe physicians, we can see the picture from a higher level. Maybe we th what we see here is not really if we look, at, for example, at the viral, not really a line that goes down and then goes up and then goes down and then goes up, but just a decrease of the viral, like this, okay? That, and, and there could be other hypotheses. So just hypothesizing about that, that's a human character, or it's a human feature. Can we make computers hypothesize about different ways to interpret this data or this data set? 
but ju not just throw any interpretation. There could be a trillion of, of such interpretations, but only such that are biologically sound, that understand the mechanism of biology that can explain such behaviors. So that was my PhD. I then created a, a company, a startup company called Corelon, still exists. Uh, however, I um, uh, went away. Um, and what we did here is something similar. We interpreted not medical data, but social data. Social profiles of people from social networks, such as Facebook, to infer their personality, their implicit personality. I'm not just talking about you know, what they write about or what is their, their demographic, but actually what is the personality, what is the character of the person, whether a person is a hipster or a geek or extrovert or introvert or someone who is cool or whatever. And this is something that we all do. You know, many times if people go to social media, social, let's say Facebook, they look at a person even if they don't know him in real life, they can already very quickly, and they do, they judge him. And with some kind of stereotypes or whatever it is, and they say, you know, this guy looks stupid, this guy look, do, looks smart, and so on. Just, you know, by the nature of what we see, how he dresses and what he writes about or, or whatnot. So we created artificial intelligence to do that. And the use of that artificial intelligence was for the world of personalization in the internet. That's a very big thing. Those algorithms that give you recommendations about content, about music, about tourism, about uh, movies, shopping, dating, whatever. Okay. So we created a tool that enabled e-commerce sites and restaurant sites and what whatever infer the user that comes into their website infer his personality, and then suggests and gives recommendations based on that personality. That's, uh, sorry? So that's uh, the first company uh, I started, and then I moved to the second company, which is Sense, which is that AI tool that gives students in, basically in higher education, a personalized feedback on the open-ended assignments that they submit, and you will see that uh, as we um, proceed with the course. Okay? So that was uh, the first part uh, of this uh, lesson about the course itself. Now we will move uh, to the second part, to the second topic, which is about medical data.